everyone. I'm Steve. Mark's around. Say hi, Mark. Hi, everybody. And this is Smokey, Steve, and Mark. Either welcome or welcome back. And happy Saturday. It is the weekend, so we know what that means. Uh, Starbucks? Maybe? Not sure. Um, Javalia. Javalia, I think it is. And uh, some powdered creamer and Splenda. It is Javalia! It's like the th I told- I- see, I corrected myself. Yep. So, hope everyone's well. I hope everyone is safe. Look after yourselves. That's the PSA for today. Y'all know the rest, probably, I'm sure. So, today, <laughs> we are gonna pick up sort of where we left off with our fair lady, Chantal. Chantal Marie, foodie beauty, big beautiful me, the daily Chantal, Chantopolis, the Chantal show, Chantal and Pete's Beezer Boudoir something, and uh, Booty Beauty once again. So, it, it's been a, there's some drama this week, just a little bit. Um, I've, I've had the challenge of trying to sort it out. I w it would have been easier this week, honestly, to probably post a video a day about this nonsense. Because it all happened so fast, and Chantal, ever the model of integrity, deletes everything she puts out there as a video so she can't be held to it. Of course it appears anyway, and it, other reactors have it and, it, and it comes up. So I was able to get, look, eyes on this stuff. So last week we were still in intuitive eating, and that has rolled into the week that we are in now. Uh, last week there was like two four-hour lives. One, she was complaining and and then giving advice to people, and then the other one, she was stoned out of her mind with Pete's, and they were just hanging out. Uh, so that that happened. Uh, there was also drama around, not drama, the channel, the reaction review channel, uh, Robin the Explorer, was taken down. And who who struck the channel, who got it taken down, was it Life by Jen, because that's who he seemed to believe it was, but she said she didn't, and that it was he should, she, at any rate, Robin the Explorer Returns, I think is the name of the channel. So if you like that channel, it is back, you can go find it. I'm not familiar, but I have to say I've only heard good things. So, judge for yourself and check it out. I'll have to do the same. So this week, we are still intuitive eating. Again. In, ah. the, in the spirit of that, I will be intuitive smoking. Throughout it. The video, probably. Because, you know, my body craves it. So I was craving a cigarette. And so if I'm craving it, I must be intuitively wanting one. So I'll just have one until I don't. Right? So. You know, I'm, I'm, in, I'm, I'm craving a good stiff drink. A drink? I could use a drink, too. All right. Are we intuitively going to do that? As long as I intuitively want to drink, I'm not technically addicted to it. Right. Me neither. I just, okay, I just on want it. five drinks a day. It doesn't mean I need five drinks a day. <laughs> Before lunch, you know. <laughs> as long as they're Bloody Marys and Mimosas, it's cool. Apparently. So, so the first thing we have is we're going to go through the videos, we're going to consider the lives, talk about some community posts, and then kind of sort out whatever the hell happened. So the first thing since we last checked in was the Wendy's mukbang, which inspired some backlash. This is on the heels of healthy eating after that pile of tacos when she had a stressed out day. Um, she's showing this, she's done this style of video before with fast food as calling herself a fast foodie, as it were where she would show an old commercial, I think she did this for McDonald's, an old period commercial from like 70s, 80s or something, talk about fast food history. It honestly wouldn't surprise me if this was an interest of hers. Not just an excuse to eat fast food on camera, but that she might be interested in this kind of thing. Okay, whatever. Um, she got a Wendy's single, a loaded baked potato, and a chicken sandwich. She was craving it. The pattern with these intuitive eating videos that all tend to be junk food, is that she was craving whatever she ended up getting. I think, and this was a concern last week with the idea of intuitive eating, because everyone doesn't understand it but her, um, is that craving and and intuitively, it, it's, it's a very fine line, I think, for folks in certain circumstances. It may not be best for everyone. And we all have to find our own way to weight loss. However, some of us are, what do they used to call them in rehab? Terminally unique. We are so damn special, we'll die from it. Because no treatment will work for us, because everyone's different. Everyone's special. Everyone's, yeah. eat a thousand calories a day. You're not damn special. <laughs> the weight will fall off. Believe me, the weight will fall off. And that's not at Chantal. Human body, if you live and exist in a human body, like we do, you can depend that certain behaviors will cause the body to react in a certain way. 
more or less. If I ate everything Chantal ate, I would gain weight. I would. There's no way I would not gain weight. Period. Um, so I'm just kind of just kind of putting that out there, just just for that. Um, so all the concern for and Mark mentioned this. There goes fatty liver. There goes diabetes. There goes everything else that could be controlled by her diet. Let's not say she has a fatty liver because she's fat, even though it sounds like it makes perfect sense, um, but that she could control it with dietary choices she makes. Again, this isn't about fitting into a 5X or a 6X. This is about liver failure. <laughs> this is about renal failure. There's other things that could be happening at this point beyond the clothes don't fit too well. So it's, it's, it's gone that far. Uh, it's a challenge, though, because my feeling, I don't know for sure, and this this is based on a little personal experience with some other folks and with myself, she likes a certain kind of attention that comes with being sick, physically sick. Um, I get the impression she's the kind of person who uses being sick to get out of doing things, like obligations and stuff. Um, so you get attention for that, and someone who needs attention would, would put that out there. However, when called onto the carpet for saying like four days ago, weren't you really concerned about your health and you were making plans and doing well and now you're not even mentioning it at all and you're eating a bunch of fast food that you said was probably lethal to you. It feels kind of like, whatever, I got your attention for that video, I got your ad sense, now I'll get it for this one. Uh, trying to, I don't know, I don't know. It's, I mean, if you put your health concerns out there and then don't want to talk about them anymore, you can't be surprised if people ask, too, especially people who are genuinely concerned. Not everyone who's concerned is a troll, necessarily. There's people who, we have them on our channel, there's people, there's people who just care because they care because they care. You know, it's not to troll, it's not to make a point, it's not to make an example out of a fat person. It's just to say, what you're going through is hard, and it's manifesting in the most obnoxious way. I mean, of all the ways for a person to struggle with their addiction, Chantal has chosen or just has, rather, one of the most obnoxious ways of, of covering for it and reacting to it when people call her on it. Um, mine was particularly bad as well. I used to say, I don't have a problem with my drinking. If you have a problem with my drinking, you can go to Al-Anon and talk to a bunch of other people. So I wasn't very nice. So this was all in all a true mukbang, storytelling, none, no TMIs, just talked about the food. Um, comment your favorite chicken sandwich below was, was one question. That's not something I sit with a lot and think about what is my favorite fast food chicken sandwich. It's not something I have on the mental Rolodex, like favorite meal, maybe I could come up with quick, favorite beverage, favorite fast food chicken sandwich. I don't meditate on that a lot. I guess Burger King, maybe. I like Chick-fil-A, but I'm supposed to not eat there. Uh, so... I don't know. I'll let someone else buy it from Chick-fil-A. Let their money go to it. I'll just eat it. Next, Hello Fresh. Hello Fresh. Cook oh, and you did it. I went there. I did that. I did that. That's for you, Big C. Hello Fresh. Cook and eat with me. So she's making cheese tortellini with a creamy pesto something. You know Hello Fresh. It's the meal delivery boxes that come to your house. You pay for them. They're like of all the brands, they're from $30 to $70 a month. Three meals for two people is the general package that you get. They send all the ingredients, everything's prepackaged. You just basically assemble it and add heat to it. There's a little cooking involved, but not much. Uh, they're supposed to serve two. Okay. She likes it. And she said she was considering a meal delivery system of prepared foods for herself. It's, I mean, that's pretty much what she does now. It's just that she uses different restaurants every time she does it. You know, Uber Eats is kind of a meal delivery system where you don't cook and they just bring you food. So, I, I mean, that's that's the same pattern of, of sorts. But she likes to cook. I mean, she needs a hobby other than eating. I guess cooking is the only other one. But because that leads to an end of, of eating. So, um, um, let's see. This helps her cook for herself. Um, and she's going to eat until she's had enough. Talk to your therapist. Talk to your nutritionist. I don't know. It's not for me to say. I'm not a professional, but I've been fat. And so I can't talk to anyone like a pro, but I can talk like a peer. And a lot of these lines are, like, so muddied. 
so muddied between full the idea of full enough, hungry enough. By the time I was ready to deal with my eating disorder, which had me both be 100 pounds overweight and about 30 pounds underweight at different times throughout my life. By the time I was ready to sit down and kind of deal with like food, what do I eat? What do I not eat? Do I care? Have I had enough? All of my natural hunger cues were gone. There was no physically hungry. There was emotionally hungry. There was angry eating and there was put myself to sleep eating and there was bored eating. Uh, but there was no, I'm hungry, let's eat. It took years to even get those cues anywhere close to what they were um, and to respond to emotions rather than with food. I mean, obviously I, I had a different thing. I would binge, but then I would purge. So it was a little bit of a different thing, but I was using food the same way just to get numb, just to get out of myself. So three, only eating Tim Hortons for 24 hours. Now, this has nothing to do with anything, but with the makeup she's wearing in this, she looks like a corpse. I only mention it because Chantal, I think, does a decent face of makeup. She looks pretty good, usually, except when she's like the greasy ponytail, no makeup. And Chantal, I've said, does not owe the world a face of makeup. It's not her... I don't. I don't put makeup on to come on camera. She doesn't have to either. But when she's feeling good, she usually does. Um, so I guess she's feeling good in this video because she does, but I just didn't care for the how it looked. I also didn't care for the idea that she was going to eat three fast food meals a day. In the previous video, I forgot to put this in, she said during her everybody's different, we are the world dieting spiel, that she prefers to eat one large meal and smaller things throughout the day. That's how I prefer to eat too. I do the OMAD thing. It's like 24 hour intermittent fasting. I usually have one large meal a day, maybe like a fruit, yogurt, protein bar, something in the middle of the day just to hold me over if I feel like I'm going to explode. Um, but most days I'm okay with it. She said that's how she prefers to eat. And then the next day orders full breakfast, full lunch, and full dinner. So what that says to me, as if it needs to be said, is that Chantal will compromise on decisions for her health, like eating in a normal schedule, for the sake of making content. So she will go right off the rails if it means she can make a video doing it. And it just happens to be a video where she's, where she's eating. And yes, fat people can eat whatever they want on camera. This isn't about whether it should be monetized or whether she has the right to do it or not. This is about whether we're both going to make it to the end of the year. <laughs> this is, you know, it's a, it's a little more serious than that. Um, I'm not going to pick petty fights about whether or not it's body positive or any of that other horse shit. It's... I don't know. This reminds me of watching, like, Cynthia Beaumont and her husband, and, like, you could see a person going downhill before he had passed away. You could see it happening. You wanted to scream, do something, somebody intervene, somebody say something. And you just, you can't. You just, you can watch. You can be frustrated and watch. You can watch a train wreck if you want. I mean, I like train wreck appeal. I'm not going to lie. I'm, not, I'm no saint. Um, reaction channels, you can watch through that, too. But it's just like, just waiting, like something's going to give. Something's going to really give. And I don't want that to happen to her, but I think it's going to happen to her. And it's frustrating that she's had help and suggestions to try to mitigate her circumstances. And they're quickly dismissed. They're, they're not stuck to for very long. They're given away in the interest of everybody's different. I'm different. That won't work for me. 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 So, terminally unique. I will die from how special I am. So, so breakfast, lunch, dinner, it's all fast food shit. Hash browns, bagel, fast forward, she fast forward the mukbang, which I thought was interesting. As she's sitting there eating, talking, not at all, she fast forwarded through the meals. Fries, crispy sandwich, donuts, then she slowed down to eat the donut. Dinner, chili with cheese and a ham and cheddar it had lots of tomatoes and lettuce so rest easy it, 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 there was practically a whole goddamn salad bar on this sandwich apparently so she got her veggies in four and again we're gonna go back and talk some drama i know the community posts were in in and out of sequence and the lives went up and down during these so i can't believe i did this so she's staying out of her apartment with her family because apparently her grandmother was in the hospital and is getting out, but they're staying at Chantal's uncle's place because it's a little bigger and has a first floor bathroom. Family stuff. She's handling family stuff, which will take her out of her own home for one night, apparently. Holy shit, she cut her hair by herself. Now, I don't 
minded. Here's here's the thing. She, I want to say two years ago, a year and a half ago, did a video where she had also cut her own hair. I don't think she cut her own bangs in that one. And her hair was very dark. It was almost black. And Chantal's extremely pale. And it looked good. I think that video was the video where she talked about having a partner having to deal with um, dingleberries, possibly, left in her area. Uh, I just think, yeah, I think that was the story where that happened. Anyway, she looked great with black hair. So my suggestion, even though it's none of my business, is for her to color her hair blue-black. I think that would look really good. Give you kind of, you know, the color palette of the uh, pale and the black. Blue-black. I would say dark and lovely midnight blue. I used to use dark and lovely. Um, it's in the African-American or black hair care products section. I found that it doesn't stain your scalp as much. And the blue-black looks great. Or bright black. Some black with a blue base or Arctic Fox Transylvania. Something like that. I've been watching a lot of hair videos since the coronavirus started. Obviously, it's not for me. I don't have any hair. But, so, okay, let's talk a little bit of the drama that was going on with Jen and Chantal. In the interest of a full disclosure, I will tell you this. I don't know Chantal. I've never talked to Chantal. I commented in one of her community chats once, and I used to post on her community board before I was doing reviews. And the kind of comments I left were similar to the kind of comments I make here. They weren't flattering, but they weren't rude. They were just observations, pretty much. So, uh, Jen, on the other hand, I would say is more than an acquaintance of, of Mark and I. Um, I've known Jen for a few years. We've never talked on the phone. We've never met. But I, we've communicated on the DMs off of YouTube. Um, and communicated by mail and, and other ways like that. So I have a, a previous sort of relationship with Life by Jen. Um, that doesn't mean some people are getting defended and some are getting vilified here. Just in the full disclosure, if it seems like I'm favoring one over the other. If I have any bias, it's because I've known Jen longer. And again, via YouTube and via friendships on other social media. Okay? So, Chanel. <laughs> Chanel. Chantal apparently had posted some dieting advice <laughs> to Life by Jed. Had given her what? had given her a suggestion or two. Because that makes sense. So Jen had commented back, I guess, about this. There's a lot of community posts that went up and down and up and down and up and down and up and down. So the post that Jen had put up, I guess, after Chantal's, you know, diatribe or whatever. Jen posted to Chantal's page a, a post which Chantal didn't leave up. She took down because Chantal filters very heavily. A lot of people do. It's her call. It's her prerogative. It makes it a compliment section, not a comment section, but do you. And Jen had said, I just popped over to see what you were eating to get some pointers since you think restricting causes binges. What caused this binge? Were you restricting? It just amazes me that someone, this was on the Wendy's video, I think, one who, uh, Someone whose channel is packed full of junk food and fast food binges has decided to give me advice on how and what to eat. Whew. Well, that kind of says a lot. And Jen does raise a good point. When was the last time any of us have seen Chantal try to restrict? And, you know, she will insist that binges... She said in the live, one of them, you haven't, we haven't seen her binge. They wouldn't allow a binge like hers to be seen on camera. Seven cheeseburgers. 10 cheeseburgers in a sitting, um, that she wouldn't, she wouldn't go for that, that that wouldn't be something YouTube would allow. Uh, hey, everyone's different. It's her prerogative. You know, I, she can call it whatever she wants. She can call what she eats and how she eats on camera whatever she wants. It's the volume and the frequency and the feelings that come with it which surround the disorder, mostly the thoughts and the feelings. You know, food eating disorders often have very little to do with food. And I found for myself, the easiest thing I was able to change was the behaviors that go with it, the eating behaviors, because that's, that's self-discipline and hard work. The other part I needed a lot of help with was the mental stuff, because it's hard to fix this brain with this one. <laughs> Sometimes you need a little help coming in from the outside. So... Jen commented back, and Chantal lost her fucking shit in, like, a couple of live streams, going off about how 
Um, what was it? Was Jen was she was fat shaming Jen apparently, um, a bit ableist perhaps because Jen uses uh, a mobility scooter to get around within her apartment and then outside her apartment as well. Uh, anyone who's not familiar with Jen, Jen is also a, a morbidly obese woman. Uh, for the sake of argument, uh, she's heavier than Chantal. Chantal disclosed she's about 400 pounds. Jen off and on discloses her weight um, as anywhere between five and 600 pounds. So Jen is a larger person. Um, she was trying, Chantal got off on all tangents. Her meals are normal. No one's ever seen her binge. Uh, she made remarks about Jen's size, which is body shaming, fat shaming, just so we're clear. Um, defended the intuitive eating again. Nobody gets it but her. How come everyone else's understanding of intuitive eating doesn't include fast food? I don't know. At least not at the beginning. You know, I've seen a lot of dietitians and nutritionists over the years. And it was not to control my binge eating. It was to control me eating foods. And it was the no good food, no bad food. You can have unlimited food. It didn't really work for me because no amount is ever enough. Because I have, even though I'm not using my substance of choice, I still have addictive thinking that creeps in. Again, that's like the whole mental part of it that I had to deal with that I couldn't do by myself. Um, you know, no one can sit at the table for you and feed you or take your food away, but you can get some help getting your shit together upstairs. And I don't, since she refuses that or turns it down or doesn't have a good rapport with the therapist within the first eight minutes and decides not to stay. So, oh, she was blaming diet culture too. Okay. Diet culture. It's ingrained into Western culture. It's designed, opinion, opinion, editorial, to make women feel shitty about themselves so that they will go out and buy diet products, which continue to make them feel shitty about themselves, and often fail so that you will go buy more stuff <laughs> because you feel shitty about yourself. It impacts men, too. Um, but we're all affected by it. And we're not all 400 pounds. So... What is her reaction to it? Why? What is the interplay between her and her environment? Because now we're going into this whole socio-cultural explanation for why Chantal eats a lot. You know, there's certainly external factors, but she's been fat forever. So something else is going on. Diet culture is real. Shaming women of size is real. So is super morbid obesity. <laughs> and so are the treatments for it. And diet cult you can't wait for diet culture to change. It's just not. You have to learn how to cope with it or ignore it. Again, the therapeutic component that goes with it. And I'm not qualified to do it for you. All I can do as a peer is say, I can smell your bullshit and it's not fooling anybody and you're going to stay sick longer. That's the only thing I can see happening as a peer. I can't tell you that as your doctor, nurse, therapist, nutritionist, nothing. But I've, I've seen it. I've done some of it, you know. And the indignance, if you don't look back at two of those lives in 10 years and think, what the fuck was I even saying, then you haven't grown. If I don't look back at my own videos in 10 years and look at some of the mouthiness, like this video, if I don't look back at this and say, God, I was so petty in the year 2021, then I haven't grown much either. You know, I like to think we all evolve a little bit, but it's been years, you know, years and years. So Jen, so after Chantal's days of raging, Jen has a response. Okay, Jen posts on her community board. First, let me go back into these. All right, Chantal put a post up defending intuitive eating, like how can an addict practice it? And then she posted a few links. They're dot coms. If they were dot edu, I might be a little more interested. Uh, Jen, and this was out earlier in the week. This was out on Wednesday. So this was the part where Jen posted her comment, and then Jen actually did a whole video about it, just addressing it. Jen's style is very different than Chantal's. Jen's a little more quiet, a little more subdued, arguably a little more passive aggressive, <laughs> whereas Chantal is just aggressive. So nevertheless, Jen, I usually don't rant about other YouTubers except for a select few, but I feel this is justified. I might be wrong and others might possibly disagree with me and that's fine too. I'm just going to say what I feel. If I decide later I'm wrong, I'll post a retraction and apologize. So with that being said, a few hours ago, I posted a comment on Beauty, Bo <laughs> Beauty Booties. 
latest video, Wendy's Mukbang, that she didn't approve. I'm attaching the screenshot of that comment. So this was, this was the kickoff. I get deleting comments. I've done it thousands of times. What I don't get is feeling that you can leave whatever kind of comment you want, giving unsolicited diet advice, proceed to post hundreds of fast food binge mukbangs, then delete a comment questioning your own eating behavior. Obviously, I'm not an eating disorder specialist, but I'm pretty sure common sense can tell you that eating Wendy's, multiple sandwiches, and a container of cheese topped with a little potato is not intuitive eating. I'm not All pointing... Right. I'm not pointing this out because I think my diet is perfect or right for her or to shame her, but when you decide to hand out advice, make sure you have some clue what you're speaking about. She's still going. If you want to delete comments and block people, I'm all for it, but when you use it to hide from being confronted about something you've started, that's cowardly. If you have something to say, say it and allow the person to respond. Don't act entitled or better than, or go ahead. In the end, it's Chantal's call. She's in control, and she likes to think, she, or she likes to think she is. Using a delete button doesn't heal an eating disorder. I know personally. Just saying. So that was Jen coming back with that. Um, Chantal followed up with another community post. I'm sorry to have to do this, but I'm going to go back to blocking anyone, even supporters who send screenshots of what other hateful people are doing. It's like she didn't look for it. Like she didn't search her own name and look for it. People do. I'm not mad at her. People do. If, if there was like a thousand reaction videos about me, I'm sure I couldn't help but want to look. I'm sure I couldn't. I mean, insecure people do that. <laughs> you know, if I was feeling insecure, I'd probably go look. So, so Jen's response video as such. Uh, Jen broke it down into a few points that she made. It was just her. It wasn't Jean. Um, and Jen gave an honest disclosure in the bidding. She said, look, this is just me. I'm still struggling with my food addiction. It's almost as bad as it's ever been. So she said, I'm not speaking as an expert. I'm just telling you what she said, what I saw, and these are the points she wanted to make. So <laughs> Jen was accused of fat shaming Chantal. Uh, and there was a comment made about, uh, Jen, uh, shaming Chantal for using a chair in the kitchen. Uh, someone, I guess, had made a comment about Jen using a scooter, and Jen had said, well, how's that any different than her rolling her ass around the kitchen in a chair? So, kind of putting that together. Um, it would be ableist to point at life by Jen using a chair, but that's happened before when Amber Lynn Reed got called out by Foodie Beauty for using a mobility scooter when she would go shopping. I think Chantal had said, I'm 300, whatever she was at the time, whatever she was telling people at the time, and I would never use a scooter. I would be da 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 Here we are two years later and she's got a walker. Uh-huh. <laughs> Don't, no, you, you know, history makes fools out of all of us. It does. So, so that was the, the, the scooter thing. Uh, Chantal then, you know, Jen said, called her a bitch, no self-worth, shameful, liar, fake. Again, I have a previous relationship with Jen, but I understand, as does Jen, that a lot of people don't like her for a lot of different reasons. Some good, some not, I don't know. Again, I'm not covering her channel, I'm just talking about the interplay between the two and the impressions I think people have. Chantal, I think, thought that she would get, that Jen was like trying to get haters to hate her less and to hate Chantal more. I don't know. I don't know. They're almost 40. Jen's like in her almost 50, I think. You would never know. Jen's like 45. But when you have all that fullness in the face, it just pops out all the wrinkles. So uh, Chantal also wants to hire a lawyer and super slander all these reaction channels, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Chantal talks shit on people too and then deletes it. Chantal is queen of the low blow. Really quick. She'll end up saying, you'll say to her, uh, Chantal, uh, I thought you were intuitive eating, you know, and now you're having Wendy's, you know, this doesn't square with what you said you were going to do. Uh, instead of saying, like, mind your own business, she'll say, like, your mother's a whore. Like, <laughs> it's like this over-the-top retaliation, which which starts the back and forth, because then she'll say, well, I can't say something back. Like, no, of course you can. But you have the outrageous comebacks. Like, when you were mad at DC Media Girl, and then mentioned the Holocaust. Like, <laughs> like, what the heck was that? Isn't there anything else you could have inserted in there at that point? Like, it's, I don't know. I mean, that I guess that's her. And then pretty much 
Jen said to Chantal, you know, you get what you give. If you treat people like shit, they're going to treat you like shit. If you treat people kindly, they're going to treat you kindly. And she's ulti- Chantal's ultimately accountable for all activity on her channel. Good, bad, or indifferent. What you put out, you get back, she says. So, the last video I saw, which it better not come down, live dinner. So, make a video already. I'm so sick of lives. I hate lives. I will tell you as a creator, and this is showing my own ass a little bit, I like lives. There's things to like about lives as opposed to creating content. One, you don't have to really prepare at all (laughs) for a live. If you have an idea of what you want to talk about, and you don't even need that, obviously. So, you can do that. Um, For someone who's interested in making money off their channel, specifically, and it's Chantal's career, you know, wait for the super chats to stack up, and then when you have made X amount, it's over. So sometimes you sit there for an hour and a half, sometimes it's four, I guess. Uh, and lives, once they're done, they're done. That's it. I mean, the, it's the only thing lazier than a mukbang, honestly. Uh, we do lives on Sundays, because fun to interact and fun to do. And I like lives sometimes. I used to do it for uh, caretaking, and I've done it for this a couple times. Usually when there's just so much shit that's gone on that, like, it takes a community to put it all together. It's almost as though we're all part of the video because I'm trying to understand what happened. So, I don't know. Make a video. Make a video. I know a lot of folks go live, and, like, in the drama community, it's a lot of lives back and forth. But, I don't know. I like videos. I don't know. So, in this last live, she's making dinner or something. I don't know, the hair. Oh, honey. Dye it black. Blow it out straight. Just saying. You know what it, it'll give you vibes of? Um, when you did the uh, Pulp Fiction. What the fuck was that? The Pulp Fiction Eat With Me type thing. When it was like that period and you had the Uma Thurman thing. It'll look like that. It'll be nice. So for this last live, I zoomed. Because, you know, live, zoom, zoom. Live, zoom, zoom. She's getting a shawarma platter. It's like Greek Lebanese type stuff. More on intuitive eating. We're all learning so much uh, about unconditional foods and rephrasing negative talk. These things are good things. These aren't bad things. Um, is is it... A, a, she's just not doing it. <laughs> I, just, I just don't think it's working out. It's trial and error. But as l- I got away with that for a while when I used to drink. I drank for about seven years. And we're talking like, if not if not daily, every other day. You know, I was drunk more often than not. And I had all the consequences that come with that. Um, But you can't just... So, uh, the rephrasing of the negative talk and the intuitive eating stuff and goes with it. These aren't bad things. You shouldn't... I don't think any of us should feel tortured about our food choices. However, in the short term, to get someone from point A to point B, from having so many comorbidities tied to a health condition... To get them out of that, something more aggressive maybe could be helpful. I don't know. But that depends on Chantal's ability, willingness, interest. You know, um, like a month ago when she wasn't a food addict, she was just doing it knowingly, apparently. So now that she is, it's it's kind of not her fault. So it's it's a get-out-of-responsibility-free card to some degree. Um, it won't stay like that, I'm sure. This intuitive eating thing can't last. Any reasonable person would watch what she's eating and say, even if you crave it or want it, it's not, it's not ideal. It's better, but it's not, it's not the best. No, you don't have to sit there and eat a dry chicken salad. No, you don't. Yes, you could go to Wendy's. I don't care. You probably shouldn't because you have a fucking problem with fast food. I can't remember the last time I was at a Wendy's. And guess what? My Wendy's levels in my blood are just fine. So, it's not necessary to go. You want to get a baked potato and a salad? Fine. Get a little something. But that's not why you're going there. I have no business in a bar, I will tell you. Now, I can go into a bar now and not be tempted. But that's after six, seven, eight years of not being around them. You know, I have no business there. I have no business taking a job as a bartender any more than someone with a food issue should be eating for a living. No business doing it. The first thing they would tell me in rehab is to get another job, at least for a little while, until you get your shit together with your addiction and your drug of choice. Then, revisit it. Mukbangs might be so much more enjoyable when they're 
I don't know, not deadly, <laughs> you know, uh, just something different, something different, something better, something better, you know, this, this isn't going to get better. The end game of this isn't looking optimistic. So random going through the zoom again, she ran up and down the stairs to get her food. She was frighteningly out of breath. Uh, she's not on Twitch at the moment. Uh, she said she got some news from YouTube, but she can't share it yet, and she will soon. So she's hanging the carrot. Uh, let's see. Again, I think she needs to dye her hair black. Personal opinion, she can look however she wants. She could shave it off. She could grow it down to her ass. I don't care. Um, someone asked her to react to a song. She had lice as a kid. She's an Aries, and again, obviously, she cut her own hair. So, what have we wrought here? What is the lesson? I have no lesson. I'm sick of giving lessons, because uh, who the hell am I? Uh, my observations. Uh, the back and forth between Jen, Life by Jen, and Chantal is interesting to me. Uh, it's two people dealing with the same problem, and one going after the other for... Uh, it, it, Chantal seems disproportionately pissed about this, which means... I think on some level she feels like she's a hypocrite and she's just acting out on it. I mean, really, what does one person who's struggling with super morbid obesity have to say to another one when neither of them are really doing well? Jen said openly in the video she did, she's currently having a hard time with her food addiction, i.e. she's eating. She's having a hard time with it. Uh, and she's disclosed that. Also, I found the difference with... Jen is Jen is also not a mukbang channel. There's a few mukbangs if you go through her old playlist that are there, but it's not her go-to. So if Jen does keto day one for the thousandth, thousandth time, which she is again, and that's what she wants to do, that's what she can do. Uh, she doesn't then three days later do a mukbang with a whole pizza topped with potatoes uh, and say, well, screw that, I can do what I want, I can live my life, and you're not going to tell me not to. She doesn't do that. She just does her own thing. Even Cynthia Beaumont, when she doesn't want to do weight loss anymore, she just stops talking about it and gets on to the next thing. So it can be done. Uh, but bringing it off and on YouTube, off and on, off and on, just creates that back and forth whiplash kind of thing that everyone always observes and complains about and that she acknowledges but makes no effort to change. You know, she's just comfortably unreliable and terminally unique. I'm liking these SAT words today. So that's my only observation. I hope Chantal has success with intuitive eating. I'm not optimistic. If she doesn't succeed with it, I hope she finds something else that does. I don't think Chantal is a monster of a person. I don't think she deserves to die from eating. Um, but it's reversible. Obesity is highly treatable. And I hope that she finds a treatment that works. Same for Jen. Same for Jen, because she's struggling at the moment. And Jen and her partner, Jean, who live together, actually, it's interesting for Mark and I to watch them. I don't review them. I just keep up with it because we're, you know, social buddies. Because uh, they're both addicts, too. Jen and her partner, Jean, his drug of choice is alcohol, hers is food. So they have their own foibles back and forth. And Mark and I are both addicts. So it's, you know, you see what works, what doesn't. Remember when we used to do this? This is a hard part, too. So I get something out of watching their channel as well. And then the way they talk about food and react around it, and the way Jen considers her illness and what she tries to do to deal with it. If somebody's trying, like trying, and they lose 10 pounds and they screw up, that's, and, you know, and then they try two weeks later and they lose five pounds and they screw up, and then they try for three months and they lose 50 pounds and they screw up. If, if you lose 50 pounds and gain it back, it, that's effort. I mean, there's some effort to that. But I don't know, doing a diet for two days and then not losing weight, and then being indignant about it after lecturing all of this. I remember this with the vegan thing. Lectured up, down, left, right, and center about how good it was, and all of a sudden we found out it was bullshit that she was eating meat for a week. So this intuitive eating thing is a very cozy cloak for, um, I'm going to eat whatever I want and call it a diet. So, do you. Do you. I'm here for it. I'm here for it. Uh, hope y'all are here for it, too. Mark, yeah. do you have any closing thoughts? No. <laughs> no? <laughs> no, I'm disgusted with her. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's honest. I'm done. That's honest. Uh, I'm sick of her. Sick of her. Sick of her. Yeah, no, you know, I mean, like you had mentioned earlier, you know, with this thing with Jen and 
uh, and her, you know, obviously, I mean, I'm partial to Jen, you know, we do have a, a little bit of a history with her, and I've always liked Jen, and like you said, I can relate to their relationship like ours, you know, and yeah. I enjoy her content, and she's very down to earth. And um, there, and and like you said, there is a huge difference between the two of them. Yeah. And um, I just, you know, I just, I don't know. Chantel is going again down a very, very bad path, and she's doing it all in the name of her profession, her job. Mm -hmm. I mean, come on, she needs to yeah. get a new job. Oh yeah, I the re <laughs> I forgot in the live stream where she said she got snipe at someone who said, oh, you put makeup on? She's like, well, this is my job, so technically I'm at work. Yeah, exactly. As she's putting down... Ugh. Right, and then she has to go ahead and tell everybody that she put makeup on. Yeah. I put makeup on for you guys today in that live stream at the beginning for the yeah. first 10 minutes when mm -hmm. there was only 10 people, 20 people, 30 people. She was like, I put my makeup on and no one's showing up. I da 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 there is so much truth behind what she was saying to that. Mm -hmm. She meant all of that, yeah. you know? And I'm sorry. I'm I don't know. disgusted. Well, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see where the week goes. The only consistent thing about Chantal is she's inconsistent. So, Absolutely. So this will change again. What it will change into, we shall see. Is this going to be a crash and burn trip to the hospital and then a, a rebirth? Are we going to go back to red lipstick mukbangs? Again, are we going to... It's a little cold out. I don't know if she'll be in the car. Um, with COVID, she won't be traveling. She got a face full of shit for that before. I don't know. I don't know. But I'll watch best I can. You got anything extra that I left out? Please feel free to leave it in the comments below so we can have a well-rounded idea of what the fuck happened. So thank you all for watching. Please do subscribe. Hit the like button and the bell on your way out so you get all the alerts, too. You can follow Mark and I on Facebook at Smokey Steve Space and Mark, or on Instagram at Smokey Steve and Mark, or on Twitter, our handle's at Smokey Steve A. Our email address and our contact information also is listed down below as well. Thank you again. And Mark and I will be going live tomorrow night at 6 p.m. Sunday, Eastern Standard Time. So if you're around, feel free to stop by and say howdy. No topic. It's usually pretty chill. Obviously, the ladies come up every so often, um, so we will usually talk about them. But it's fair game. Anything else comes up, too. We have good mods. It's usually pretty chill, um, so don't hesitate to stop by and say hello, okay? It's Thanks the for cool side of the pillow! It is the cool side of the pillow. Thanks for watching. Bye! Say bye, Mark! Bye!